over 50 years, O-Gauge Transit riders on point-to-point -point streetcar systems have had to endure the bumpy changes of direction at the end of the lines. Now, however, with the magic of three-rail DCC automatic train control, we can give our riders smooth stops and even add extra, car, extra cars on the line for more passenger comfort. Hello, I'm James Ingram. We're going to demonstrate running all four street cars, then do a second demo running just the first and third cars. First fast forward at 800% and then again at actual speed. Finally, we'll demo running a four-wheel bump and go car on this same track. In the second video, part two, we'll review the details control panel, detectors, wiring drawing, flowchart, and commands used. Note the uh, green status light on the left side. As soon as we push that public push button, that'll start the system up and that light will change to red and it'll stay red while those are running. What we've got is four MTH Proto 3 O gauge Brill streetcars running point to point, which we can run with our DCC automatic control system made by North Coast Engineering Company, now known by its initials NCE, made in the USA in the Rochester, New York area. And we can run any combination of one to four streetcars on this system. Here we're running all four. And this is, no, this is, what you're looking at right now is fast forwarded 800%. In other words, it's going eight times as fast as the real video. The uh, original speed clip will be shown at the end of this video. And you can see what we're doing. We're basically running one streetcar at a time. Each, each car runs and parks itself, then the other one runs. Now a complete cycle has uh, completed and you may have noticed the status flight just went to green a minute ago. Now they're starting a second cycle to the upper station. There's the first car. The second car is running. There's a Z-stuff detector um, on each end of the layout. You'll, you'll see it change to red right about now. That changed to red when the third car went by. They're running speed 8 on the main line. They slow down to speed 5 on the upgrade and then they run speed 4 after the detector. The lower detector now right there goes to red. There's the second car coming down and watch right up about now that detector down there changed to red. So we've got a detector on each end. And we use time delay. When that car crosses in front of the detector, we slow the speed down to speed four and we do a time delay. And that's how we can park the car at the appropriate location. Now we're gonna demonstrate running just two cars. We can run any combination of these four cars, just one, any two, any three. In this case, we took the blue one off to get it out of the way, and we're just running the number one car and the number three car, which is the green car. So and this, this system isn't just for controlling your three-wheel O-gauge trains. This system will work for your... N gauge, your HO gauge, your S gauge, your two ALO gauge, and your large scale train since it's standard non proprietary NMRA DCC. That car just made a station stop why it stopped. If we take a look at this layout, there's nothing too exotic. Uh, we've got the NCE power cab, our generic booster our amp meter, our control panel, our push button status light, and basically a, a long loop of track point to point with a bumper at each end. No blocks, that's a nice thing. And we've got our uh, 
two Z stuff detectors back there. So simple point to point layout, but we can run four streetcars automatically. I know the, the the trend these days is to control the train with your phone, but you really want to have four guys sitting here with phones running each of these four cars uh, continuously. That would be kind of tedious. The, the uh, NCE controller does a little more efficiently. We'll turn the uh, power on to this system. This is an old uh, RR amp meter. It's showing us voltage and amps, and that started out in the high twos, I believe, and it's going to settle down to about 1.6 as the capacitors on those four streetcars charge up. And when that gets charged up, we should be able to push the start button, and we actually have two start buttons. There's one on the control panel and there's one on the public push button. And notice this light over here is green. I think it's in the edge of the picture. Uh, that's our, we call that the status light. If this is like on a public display, we tell the kids when that light is green, you can push the button to make the trains run. But if it's red, it shows the system is busy and it doesn't do any good to push it. Now, the kids don't always pay attention to that, but gives you something to start with. Notice that button will go to red. Got to select the car for just a second. Now notice that status light changed to red and the first street car is on the main line operating. What we've got here is four MTH Proto 3 O gauge Brill street cars running point to point which we can run with our DCC automatic control system. Now that's coming up the inclines approaching detector 6. Right about now you may notice that detector went to red and the controller is running a time delay from when it crossed the detector to know where to park it. Now that car stopped at the upper station. We're calling this the upper station over here and the lower station over there. Now the second car is running and basically these these run at speed 8 on the main line like you see that blue car running now and then we're using a time delay uh, so that when they get into the corner there just below where the incline starts we reduce the speed to speed 5. That's not necessary, I think it just, but we think it just makes it a little bit more realistic to slow them down, possibly like a real car would do as it's grinding up the grade. And then you can see it's approaching the Z-stuff detector there, which will go red about now. There it goes. Now we start a time delay. And when that time delay, it's about three or four seconds. When that time delay ends, it sends a stop command to park that car. Now we're running the third car. Same system. And the heart of this thing is what's called a NCE mini panel which is located on the control board down there which is made by the uh, it, which is essentially a programmable model train controller you can use for automatic 
train control. And that's made by a company called North Coast Engineering, which goes by the initials NCE nowadays, located in the vicinity of Rochester, New York. Now there comes our third car up the grade and across the detector and we'll do a, a several second time delay and that car will park. Now in a second, and we have time delays which are adjustable between between cars. We can have it hesitate just a little bit between cars to try to make it a little bit more realistic. And there's pieces of cardboard on the table here, they're cut out to be the length of the streetcar approximately. You can see them over here also. And we place those on the on the table to indicate where the car should stop. So basically what we've got here is one long piece of point-to-point -point track and no blocks. Uh, we have two power inputs, one here and one over there. Now there's the last car coming up, the grade. And as soon as it crosses the detector, we give it a speed zero command to stop it. And in a minute, that car will start up going the other direction. And we go down, we go down, we go down the uh, downgrade also at a reduced speed of five and when we get to the bottom on the level we'll speed up to a speed of eight and again not necessary it just makes it possibly a little bit more realistic we call that detector six up there on the uh, upgrade right about here and then the other detector which is back here on the level where the car is heading now to watch right about now that car across the detector you saw it change to red and again it starts a time delay executing a time delay of several seconds and that should bring that car back and park it about where that piece of cardboard is in a, in a minute the uh, second car will start running and again it's going down the down the uh, downgrade at a reduced speed of five when it gets to the main line it speeds up to speed eight when it crosses the detectors the controller slows it down to speed four so when we're parking them in the, the yard area or the station area we're running at reduced speed of four Now that car is approaching the detector and right about now it goes to red. So again we start a time delay and there's a piece of cardboard, I think it's kind of hidden by the station, but that car will come in and park behind the first car that came in. Now we have a brief pause and then you can see the blue car up on the elevated part by the upper station. It started up and it's, it's running at speed 5 while it's on the, on the incline portion. And when it gets down to the bottom, it'll speed up to eight. It, it, we do this by time delays. And, and again, this, this system won't work only. This system isn't for just your O-gauge three-rail trains. It'll run your N-gauge, your HO-gauge, your S-gauge, and your large-scale trains. For example, to name a few, uh, it'll run your Athern, Atlas, Lifelight, Cotto, O and N gauge trains and some Lionel HO and S gauge trains as well as your LGB Marklin and Pico in large scale since all these manufacturers use non-proprietary non NMRA DCC okay while I was talking the uh, last car which is actually the first car to leave but it's the last car to return 
That one's going down the incline. And it'll hit the main line and speed up to speed eight. And basically the key thing is to note we're really running just one car at a time. So this is actually a very simple system when you analyze it. Uh, we, we run each car separately, then we start the other car. We can also run any combination of these cars, just one of them, any two, any three. Now when that crosses the detector back there, as soon as it crosses the detector, that sends a speed zero command that stops it. Now with the repeat switch is open, and you can see the status light went back to green. So those, those cars will sit there and wait until somebody comes along and pushes that start button again, like if this is on a public display. And we'll do that now. We'll push the repeat switch. I should say we'll push the start switch, which I just did, and that started them up again. Now that'll make a that'll make a another cycle like we just saw happen. And basically it takes five minutes to move all those all four of those cars to the uh, up to the upper station, then another five minutes to bring them down, down again. So about ten minutes for a complete cycle. And that that switch that's on the control board that I'm calling the repeat switch, if we close that switch. Then they'll just run continuously all the time once you start them until you open the repeat switch. Okay, there's the first car arriving at the top. There's our second car on the main line. And you can see the this amp meter showing around 14 volts. We normally would run with a uh, normally run with the uh, NCE Power Pro, which is the 5 amp system. Uh, that we normally use for controlling the O-gauge trains. However, we had a problem with not being able to get the, the Proto 3 locos to run in reverse when we send the reverse command from the mini panel through the Power Pro. Uh, hoping to get this figured out eventually, but as a workaround, we're using the Power Cab, which is what this is laying here. We're using a Power Cab and a, a generic booster, which is back here. And with that power cab and that generic booster, we can get our voltage up higher and uh, run these cars okay. I tried running uh, the trolleys with the power cab only, and with the power cab only, we could only run two cars maximum, and that was just barely. And we had to disconnect all, all four of the lights. You can see there's two lights here, the bumper and the track connector, and the same thing over here, the bumper and the track connector, then the fifth light being this status light. You had to disconnect all those lights with the power cab only because it, it just didn't have enough uh, voltage. But with, with the booster, we can uh, run the four cars successfully. There goes, there goes the last car. This is a Philadelphia trolley. End station to northeast end terminal. And when you're setting this thing up, you can use those pieces of cardboard, uh, such as this thing that's laying here, you can use those to run one car at a time and make sure it's parked at an appropriate spot that's not interfering with another car. And then when you get all those 
distance has worked out, run all four cars together like we're doing now. Okay, there comes the last car. This is a number 15 trolley, fifth and pen to Temple. We have a brief time delay and then it, it returns. We're calling the uh, detector on the elevated portion back there. We're calling that the number six detector, which is the one we usually use. Most of these videos, we just use a single detector, but for this, we need two of them. And then the one on the, the lower, the level part, that's kind of back here, calling that the number eight detector. And that's simply because they're connected to input six and input eight on the train controller. They could really be connected to any any input, but we're using six and eight. And we could also have station stops and announcements if we were running less cars. These cars are capable of doing uh, announcements and station stops, but right now the, the uh, controller is out of space. This thing they call the mini panel, our programmable train controller, has about room for a roughly 120 commands, so you're kind of limited in what you can do. With, with this four car system and reducing the uh, reducing the speed to, to climb the uh, incline when we're going one direction and reducing the speed when we when we go backward and reverse down down the incline adding those commands in we don't have room to do uh, announcements and station stops except for one car which I'll I'll demonstrate later. I, we were able to put the uh, commands in to do a station stop with announcements for just the, the one car in the reverse direction. Okay, there's a, half of our trolleys are back down. There's the third one starting up. And th these detectors are the Z-stuff detectors we've been using in the previous video. These also could be reed switches or reed switches and magnets or electric eyes. You, you just need some way of sensing the train. A smart guy uh, in Virginia named Ted Ansley has been experimenting with photoelectric eyes. Uh, that he gets from eBay. I, I prefer, personally prefer the Z stuff detectors because they're easier to locate, but the photoelectric eyes can be uh, obtained cheaper. Okay, there's our third car as we turned and parked. Now our last car is starting from the upper station and going down the downgrade. There it's speeded up. If, if you ran just the minimum of command, if you used just the minimum of commands to run these back and forth, I believe you could run five and maybe six cars. Uh, that would be without any slowing down on the upgrades and downgrades. Now there's our final car coming across the detector and stopping and watch the status light. That'll go back to green in a second. Again, that tells the public, if there is a public here, that the system is available to operate. Just this button says push and release when status light is green so if we push the push that again you can see it change back to red and now it's starting a, a third cycle
we said earlier we can run any combination of these four cars. What we'll do now is we'll run just cars one and three only. So we've got to remove car two. That's the blue one since it's in the way of car three. I'll do that now. The, the fourth car, which is a red one, is parked at the rear, so that one's out of the way. So the next thing we have to do is make sure we turn, we open the corresponding switches that control running those uh, four cars. These Atlas slide switches control which cars get run. I'm going to open the one for the red car and open the one for the blue car, but the one for the green car and the one for the cream colored front car are still closed. So when we push our start button you can see our status light goes to red and car one is running. And as I mentioned this is real simple because there's just a bunch of simple commands programmed into that controller and it, it checks the it checks the status of that uh, that switch. Uh, what that switch does it doesn't really check the status of the switch. I should say more correctly, the switch when we close that switch, it grounds an input on the controller, and the controller checks to see if that input is grounded. And if it's grounded, it runs a car. And if that input's not grounded, it skips running that car. So. Now there's the first car coming across the detector. It's in entering the yard area, uh, going to the station at speed four, just like before. And there it's stopped. Now in a minute, you can see the controller started the green car, which is the third car. It skipped over the commands to run the uh, blue car. It just runs each of these cars one by one. In fact, that's how I determined how we determined the stopping points. Just running one car at a time and getting it to stop approximately where it needs to stop that it won't bump into uh, another car. If the cars do bump into each other, and that does happen occasionally because they don't always stop exactly the same place. If they do bump into each other, it's not a big deal because they're running fairly slowly in the yard at speed four. And those Brill cars have a, a, a bumper such that it protects the headlight. Now you can see that car parked back where it always has, has stopped. And you can see the space where the second car uh, stopped, which is kind of over here. That was vacant because that, that space was still there for the second car, even though it didn't run. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to close the uh, switches that control the uh, station stop and the announcement for the the uh, cream colored car that's sitting up on the at the upper station as I mentioned earlier we've got space in the controller for one announcement and station stop and that's all the space that was available but we'll, we'll do it now just to demonstrate it now you can see that car came back and parked in the place it usually parks Now our first car, when it gets somewhere, I believe in this area, again there's another delay statement controlling where it's going to stop, but it'll stop and make about a 30 second announcement cycle. Next stop, 6th Street. There it goes. All these MTH 
Proto 3 trolleys they have they seem to have as far as I can tell this announcement feature built into them. And we can turn that announcement cycle on and off by the, using the two end switches on the end of the controller. Now here comes our first car back into the yard at the lower station. Again, you can see it, it stopped in its normal spot up there and the status light went back to green. So that's, that's hopefully a demonstration of how we can run uh, any, any combination of cars. Now we've got one of the uh, MTH Bump and Go trolleys on the line. You've probably seen these already. They've got a bumper on each end and when you smack that bumper into something it reverses direction. This is a MTH model that I believe was in the 2007 catalog and we reduced the voltage a little bit. Our generic power supply, we can adjust the voltage and we put the voltage down around 10 volts or so. Uh, it gets a reasonable speed for that trolley. But you can see it's coming up on the upper station and banged and going the other direction. So uh, we're, we've still got DCC power in the rails. Now that those little four-wheel trolleys have no no decoders in them, but the uh, rectifier circuit that rectifies normally rectifies AC power is happy to rectify the DCC uh, signal which is kind of vaguely similar to AC it's happy to rectify that into DC and it'll run that run that trolley whenever that bumper hits something it'll, it'll reverse direction <laughs> 